92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and uh, soon to be video on RTC Channel 4, right, Scott? That's right. Hey, sir. Scott's back in the studio with us. In fact, I believe he's got his own coffee cup now. Is that right? Yes, sir. Thank uh, you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Always, always glad to help out a, a, a guy of your magnitude. Oh, my God. I know, I know, I know. That's horrible. <laughs> Anyway, time now on this Wednesday morning for our Woodlawn Hospital Report. Dave Colger, who is the Chief Financial Officer at Woodlawn. John Kraft, who is the incoming Chief Financial Officer at Woodlawn. Good morning, guys. Thanks for being Good here. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Talk us a little bit about Woodlawn Hospital. Well, I guess question first, does Mr. Alley have his coffee cup here? <laughs> he does. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. I'll get you yours. Don't okay. worry. Don't worry. You know, that's yeah. all. All about uh, finance. <laughs> and we're not supposed to mention that it takes two of us to do what he's doing on a monthly basis. None of that. Okay. But None of that. All right. With, with that, for the hospital financials for the month of uh, September, we had a fairly busy month. Good. With uh, patient days being up over budget. Uh, admissions were up over budget. Statistic-wise, surgeries exceeded budget and in the oncology department those volumes were up there um, we had 11 million dollars in revenue out of the 11 million seven million dollars gets written off to contractual adjustments those are monies that are not paid by the uh, federal or state governments or negotiate rates with uh, insurance companies with that we had 600 a little over 600000 come in from our nursing home funds, and the expenses were $5 million. So for the month, we had a 212000 profit with the nursing home monies coming in. From operations alone, it was right around a $300,000 loss. So you can see the impact sure. that the nursing homes and that have made on uh, the healthcare business. Relatively so new entry for Woodlawn into nursing homes, right? Yes, it's been uh, just a little over two years. Okay. We started in it and we build up. And at this point, we have uh, 10 different facilities throughout the state that we work with. And uh, all class organizations, very, very good. And we try to help them improve their patient care. The thing that we seem to find is that people leave hospitals a little sicker. Everybody wants to get them out quick. They go to the nursing homes. Nursing homes have to have staff that, you know, have to treat that patient a little different. And we will work with them on education and different policies that way. Okay. So, All right. So good, fi good month financially. Good month financially. Okay. How does that? How does that set us up for the year? Well, to the year we're still running behind budget. Okay. A um, couple of things that have happened is in May, June time period, we got two new doctors on right. board. And Dr. Thomay, general surgeon, he's been tremendous for the hospital uh, doing new procedures, keeping people in the community, uh, very well received by the physicians and very revenue producing for the hospital. And then just recently, Dr. Seward came on board new OB physician, um, board certified, and he's building that practice back up. So that is very good in those two areas. And those started, as I say, Dr. Tomei was in May coming on board and took a month and a half to get ramped up. And Dr. Seward's been a little over a month. So we were behind going into it, um, looking at year-end still trying to get that break even and break even for critical access hospitals throughout the country is normal okay okay and of course uh, dr dr sewer dr Thome both do radio programs here and we appreciate that second and fourth mondays of the month so we want to remind our listeners to tune in for doc talk radio from woodlawn hospital oh it's very very good they are two physicians that really like to get back on the community and exactly. get back and everything. So um, we're, we're happy to have okay. those two. 
Do you have other notes from the board meeting yesterday? I know uh, the board was in session. I'll let Mr. Right. Kraft. We'll let Mr. Kraft take care of that. Take right? care of that. Um, not too much happening at the board level. We did have the election of officers for the new year, um, same as we had last year. Uh, Jim Mulligan is going to be the chair. Um, Dick Belcher will be the vice chair. And Nancy Day will be the secretary. Okay. Uh, we did have appointments for committees. And we do have a new board member. Um, Randall has left the board, and, and we've got Jim Strader, who's our new board member. And uh, yesterday was his first meeting at the board, so okay. we're very happy to have him on board. Excellent. Excellent. Jim's a very community-based person. Well, he's been, uh, he and his wife have both been very instrumental in the foundation over the last few yes. years. Oh, definitely. Yep. So that's been a big help, too. Anything else from the board meeting yesterday? If, if no capital equipment items, okay, anything that's, that that's way. where I go next usually is right. uh, what we no have on the drawing board and what we, we're looking ahead to. Right, right now, our capital equipment, big purchases are pretty well put on hold for the rest of this year as we get into our budget for 2018. And a lot of that is just sitting back waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for Washington to do something. <laughs> but... Uh, that's that's where we're sitting there. Uh, the one thing that did wasn't board related, but also on board meeting day, we had our uh, accreditation survey. Okay. Yeah, the HFAP survey was two days, Monday and Tuesday. Came through it very well. The surveyors we had uh, four of them. We had a physician. We had two or one administrator, um, two administrators. A nursing executive, and then a, um, they call it life safety, but it's really the facilities. Um, and it, they were very, um, they were very appreciative of the uh, of the survey, how easy it was for them to go through the facility. They told us how nice the facility was, how engaged everybody is. Um, so we really were pretty happy with the results of the survey. They're always going to come through with some findings, but. We'll just work through those two, but it was it was actually it was what they said it was a very good survey. It takes a lot of good people to make a hospital, doesn't it? It does, it does, and like John says, everybody there uh, makes our jobs a whole lot easier. Dave, you mentioned the budget process. Is that finished now? As we look ahead to 2018, well, the budget is was given to the board of directors at the meeting yesterday. Okay. They will have it for a month to review any questions, any concerns coming back. Um, they'll review the operating budget. They'll review a three-year capital budget. And during this next month, we'll look at answering their questions. Then we'll get it approved at the November board meeting. And then we have to update all the statistics and financial files and get ready for 2018, uh, January 1. That's our fiscal year. Does it, does it have to go through county government? No, it does not. Okay, I did it, not know. It doesn't go through the county government, but when we have our audit come in, the, the auditors we use are BKD out of Fort Wayne. They have to get the audit concept approved by the State Board of Accounts. Then the audit goes back to the state as a government entity, and then they review it also. So it goes through two different reviews okay. in that. And then it's, uh, how does it compare to 2017? Well, ba basically, we're looking at a 4% rate increase and two to three percent in expenses and if you go well a four percent rate increase out of that 50 percent of our business is medicare and we're going to get maybe 1.1 percent of that so um, we've had the lowest increases i think of most hospitals around as we look ahead to uh, 2018, do we also kind of look over our shoulder at Washington to see what's happening there? Oh, that's that's one of the first places we go anymore. <laughs> We're not looking over our shoulder. We're not looking over our shoulder, you know. The old story about looking down the tunnel and seeing the light, you know. It's Washington. It's not a train. And right now it's just sort of a brick wall because nobody can decide on 
how much money they want to spend on health care. And, you know, I've had 40 plus years of health care experience and watching this cycle go, and it's probably in the most confusing state it's ever been in, and so many people just ripping it apart, saying, I don't want to spend it on this money, but I want to spend it here, but I don't, you know, come together. You know, we got people out there that uh, need health care, um, need the coverage, need to get in, and let's not forget them. Overall, would you say the Affordable Care Act has been good for our small hospitals around? Well, my my opinion is it has been very good for Woodlawn Hospital. It put about a million and a half to our bottom line. And in that million and a half, I'm not saying that was all profit. That allowed us to get to a $200,000 profit on a hundred. dollars $40 million of revenue. So it's not a huge percentage. So it's been very good. And, and that reduced people going that we would send to collection agencies or charity care or any of those. We had a company, Claim Aid, come in and work with the community. They're still there, aren't they? They're, they are yeah. still there. Because I have used them. They're doing a good job. And that reduced our bad debts from, say, 6% down to 4%, and our charity care from 3% to 2%. So all those things going together has been very positive, and it's gotten a lot more people into a health care stream. The worst scenario is nobody going to see the doctor. They come into the emergency room, get hit with a high-priced ER bill, get admitted to the hospital with something that could have been treated a year ago. And, you know, that's the that's the health care stream we got to come up with. But with the insurance, of course, they can come in ahead of time and get those things taken care of. Yes, along with, you know, the wellness programs right. and all that that are right. being put into place. So it's important to keep those type programs out there and keep the community healthy. Let me ask John Kraft here, as incoming CFO, I know Dave's going to be with us for almost another year, but as incoming CFO, what, what types of things do you do you look uh, forward to knowing? What types of things do you find yourself engaged in now? Uh, well, I've gotten, a, <laughs> as I've onboarded, I've visited each of uh, the areas of the billing office and, uh, uh, and uh, HIM, which is medical records. Um, got a little bit into the detail of those areas. I think that was invaluable in trying to learn the organization process and just kind of getting the culture of the organization. Um, every organization has a little bit different culture as you move from organization to organization and, and uh, working with Dave and his staff has been um, very fun to, to kind of get into the culture of what, and as John um, says, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice family atmosphere. Um, it, it's it's been really fun to work with everybody there. Hospital finance is kind of a different animal, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's uh, it's you know you wonder about these these things called contractual allowances, and they're even bigger than the expenses are, and that's something <laughs> that gets lost in the translation. Right. Um, trying to explain that to uh, to everybody is, is uh, always a uh, a chore in a way that they understand it. But uh, it's so complicated for us. How do we simplify it down to talk to the average person about what really happens? It's it's a huge industry, and and it's hard to understand even for us. A real go ahead, Dave. One of one of the things, and we talk about contractual allowances and. It's more a pet peeve, I think, but <laughs> uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, that they came out with uh, hospital assessment fees. So the state uh, has an assessment, not a tax, but an assessment that we have to pay to see Medicaid people. So they'll reimburse us somewhere around 15 to 17 cents on the dollar but we have to pay them a fee to see the folks. And each year that fee keeps going up. So now it's based on not just Medicaid folks, but it's based on all our inpatient days and our outpatient volumes. So they keep changing and you know taxing us more and more. 
So not only do we have the states taxing us and all the hospitals, we've got the contractual adjustments and the lower payments. So it, it's a changing environment, and it'll continue to be that way. It's going to fluctuate, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I participated on the Council of Finance for the Indiana Hospital Association, and that was a main topic <clears throat> we met on October 12th, and that probably took... Um, probably two-thirds of the meeting discussing that program, where it's going, um, how it's being run, uh, and, and where the money is going, you know, the trail of money that every CFO wants to know sure. where that audit trail is. So um, that was a heavy part of the discussion. So that's a main topic at the, at the state. You know, he says, you look at Washington with both eyes, but then there's that one eye that kind of looks out <laughs> the corner at Indianapolis to make sure that they're in line, too. Sure. Grab your crystal ball for a minute. Will the small community hospitals, Woodlawn, Pulaski Memorial, that type of thing, will they still be around in 10 years? You know, I, I'm one of those guys that believe the glass is half full, and they will be around, but like anything, they're going to change. They're going to offer different services. When years back, I said I've been in the industry a while, <laughs> um, it used to be 60%, 70% of your volume was inpatient. Right. The, uh, the small community hospitals had to change. 80% of their revenue is outpatient now, so very little inpatient. Do we see some of that changing? Yes. Do we see them adopting or making the changes necessary to keep those services and people here? Yes. But then you're looking at telemedicine, you're looking at whole new avenues of delivering health care. Exactly. I uh, happened to note a TV commercial the other night, and uh, it was about telemedicine, basically. $45, you open your pad, you talk with the doctor, get some advice, find out how serious the situation is. So, uh, coming thing? Yes, since the insurance companies are now paying for it. <laughs> Always a potential. I mean... Um uh, the physician always wants to see the patient to know what's going on, but that's the wave of the future. Telemedicine is definitely the wave of the future. We're in pretty good shape computer-wise at Woodlawn Hospital? We are in excellent shape. <laughs> we got more computers than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> than RTC does, right? Than RTC. <laughs> we got computers that are running our... No, I wasn't. <laughs> but no, we've uh, had some major updates with uh, computer systems, you know, back January we had a cyber issue and we've updated all that, security's great, and we're moving forward. So Excellent. that's been very good. All right. Dave Colger, he's CFO of Woodlawn Hospital. John Kraft is the incoming CFO. Gentlemen, have we pretty well covered it? Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think well, that's it. Well, I could add one thing about you know, two youpers coming down across the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but my, okay, my fellow Kalanians won't like it. <laughs> Call Dave. John Kraft for the rest of the story. <laughs> Dave and John, thanks very much for being here today. We appreciate it. Keep up the good work you do for our community, for Woodlawn Hospital. It's important to us. Thank you very Thank much. You.